to my vegan kitchen. I'm Michelle. So you went plant-based, right? Or you're thinking about going plant-based, but you have no idea what to do, what to eat, where you should start. Well, this is the perfect video for you because in this video, this is the plant-based starter pack. I'm going to show you breakfast, lunch, dinner, and even a snack, what you need to go plant-based. Come with me. I'm going to show you now. All right, so you guys ready for a day filled with meals, with yummy, delicious, incredibly easy to do meals? That is also a little bit on the healthier side for you. The first thing we're going to do the minute you get up, guys, is get yourself some water and lime or lemon in your water. This is gonna help you detox. It's also gonna hydrate you. So just remember, you've been sleeping all those hours, your body's working, it's helping to renew cells. Between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. is when your body do the most detoxing. And you're gonna help it along with definitely water and lime or lemon. I choose to use key limes. I just prefer the taste of limes over lemon, but you can do either one. Also, they're packed with vitamin C. So not only are you hydrated, you're getting vitamin C. Here's a little tip, guys. So you're gonna get lots of gems in this video. So I hope you watch the whole thing. When you go plant-based, and when you're 100% plant-based, you're not eating anything outside of plants, fruits, vegetables, um, nuts, legumes, you won't develop body odor. And I know you've heard that before. I know everybody's like, what? What is she talking about? I haven't worn deodorant in years, in probably three years. But here's the trick. Just in case, you know, you're going to go out or whatever, you will sweat, obviously. But this is what gets rid of any type of smell. Because obviously sweating, there's bacteria, you're going to start to smell a lime. Just take a lime, so you get double use from your lime. You squeeze it in the water, and what's left over, right under the arms, guys. That's all you have to do. Now, for the ladies, I always say, you know, between the boobies, you wanna do it between the boobies also. This will keep you fresh all day long. I promise you. I've been doing it for years, like I said. Tip number one. All right, guys, so for breakfast, you can make it nice and easy. Here's some suggestion. Again, remember what I said, your body's detoxing between 11, uh, sorry, between 8 and 11 a.m. You want to have fruits. Fruit is a natural detox. It's going to get everything that you need to get out of your body. Also, herbal tea. But if you can't have fruits or you want to take something that's a little bit more substantial, have a smoothie, a fruit smoothie. This is how I make my smoothie. All right, in my blender cup, I'm going to add a blueberry. I'm going to add some pineapples. Pineapple trunks are nice because they really sweeten up my smoothie. And guys, you can use whatever fruits you want. Just make sure that you're using frozen fruit. I'm going to use some frozen avocado. And yes, avocado is a fruit. You can use frozen avocado or you could use bananas. In this smoothie, I don't want to have the banana taste, so I'm using avocados. Banana and avocados gives the smoothie a nice creamy texture. I'm going to add my coconut water. So I'm adding two scoops of protein powder. And if, all right, let's put the top on and let's blend this baby up. Now my smoothie is done. And just like that, you have a very nutritious breakfast. Now you can add, you know, different things to it. You can maybe add some peanut butter for a little bit more protein, but you did put the protein powder in there. But if you just want a little bit something just to hold you a little bit longer, that peanut butter will hit the spot. Well, that's my breakfast and it's delicious. All right, here's a really easy lunch idea. We're gonna make a pizza. And I chose the pizza as part of the basic plant-based snack um, pack because it's familiar. You're familiar with eating stuff like pizza, so I didn't want to go too much off track. But this is an easy way to show you how to do a really good plant-based pizza. I'm using 
non bread. I got that just from Trader Joe's. I'm placing it in my cast iron skillet because this can go from the stove to the oven and just a little bit of parchment paper just to line the pot. Adding marinara sauce to my bread, just a little bit, just enough. And you could play with this however you want, whatever your heart desires. So I'm just gonna mix that around, right? And then I'm gonna add some vegan mozzarella cheese. Guys, you can get vegan cheese now in almost every single supermarket. It's not the days of the past where the cheese was nasty. They actually taste really good now. They've been working on it. They've been coming up with some ingenuity. So I like to add my cheese now onto my bread and my sauce. Then I'm gonna add toppings. Again, you can add the toppings that you desire. I'm gonna add some red and green bell peppers. I'm gonna add mushrooms. And with my mushrooms, I slice them really thin and I space them out. I really don't want the mushrooms on top of each other because I want everything to cook evenly. And also my bread is already cooked. So it's not gonna spend much time in the oven. So I wanna make sure nothing is touching so everything cooks all the way through. And for a little greenery, we're gonna add some spinach. So you get the idea here, plant-based. We're adding all these delicious plants to our pizza to balance out the bread, okay? The, um, spinach has protein, it has vitamins, it has irons. So again, it will help to slow down that insulin so it doesn't like get into your bloodstream really quickly. I'm gonna add more cheese right on top. Remember, this is plant-based. We're gonna have to add a little bit of oil. The oil is gonna give it the fat that it needs so everything melts and heats evenly. So we're just gonna use a little bit of olive oil and just go right across the top of our pizza. We're gonna pop this in the oven at 400 for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the edges of our bread is brown. All right guys, our pizza is ready. I'm gonna place it right there. You can customize your pizza however you like it. This is how I like mine. I like some garlic powder on there and I really generously place garlic powder on there. And then I like this balsamic glaze and all balsamic glaze is, is the balsamic vinegar reduced down so it comes to a nice thick glaze. It's more sugary, if anything. It's not um, as acidic as it is when you just have the vinegar by itself. And that's it. I'm gonna cut into this baby and have a, a nice slice. Get into this slice right here and let's taste it. I love this plant-based life. Delicious. Now guess what guys, I got a snack for you. Come with me. All right, you're gonna get a skillet, place it on the stove and get it heated up. All right. All right. I would suggest that if you're new to plant-based, get yourself a good set of pots. These are caraway nonstick pots. I have a discount, I'll leave the link below. They cook really nicely because they're non-stick, so nothing sticks. It comes with this beautiful set, so you get all the pots that you're possibly gonna need. The only um, pot that I have is the caraway, the cast iron that I use for the pizza, and a wok. That's it. Those are the only pots I use. That's all you need. So we're getting this heated up. We're gonna head over here. This is so good. I have different nuts here. So I have some sunflower seeds. So I have seeds and nuts. Sunflower seeds, I have some pumpkin seeds, I have walnuts and almonds. Now you could choose your favorite nuts for this or seeds, it's fine. Or you could just use one. If you want, you could just do walnuts if that's your thing, or you could just do almonds if that's your thing. So I'm doing a handful of sunflower seeds. Drop it right in my skillet. I'm gonna do a handful of pumpkin seeds. Drop it right in my skillet. Some almonds. Let's see how many, how many will fit in my hand. That's a big handful. Okay, we're gonna do like that much. So it's still a handful. And then we're gonna do walnuts. And this jar I could actually get my hand in. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add some maple syrup. And depending how sweet you want this to be is how much maple syrup you add. I usually just kind of coat the whole thing just like that, and as you can see, now I'm out of maple syrup. Then I'm gonna salt this. So a couple of dashes of salt. 
okay? And then we're gonna allow that to come to a bubble like you see it's doing. All right, come in so I can show you what this looks like. After about a minute, you just wanna take a spoon and just toss everything around. Bring the flame back to about a medium. Make sure it's all coated with maple syrup, okay? Make sure everything is coated with maple syrup and then just kind of leave it and let that maple syrup thicken up. You guys caught me already tasting it. But come on in so you can see. Once you get to this point where your maple syrup have evaporated, see there's hardly anything in there, it's caramelized. You're gonna turn the heat off and then this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your pan, you're gonna take some parchment paper, right? Just lay it down and then you're just gonna dump out everything. And just kind of space it out because this needs to cool down a little bit. So you might wanna do this ahead of time just so you'll have that snap when you're ready. So our nut brittle have cooled down just a little bit. So just so I'm able to let you taste it. Now I let it cool down for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's still kind of sticky and gooey, but if you let it cool down like overnight, it's more like a brittle. Now that you're gonna be plant-based, you need to take your food with you everywhere because you just never know when there's not gonna be something that you're able to eat. So let me get in here. Cameraman, come back in so you can see. See, that's what it looks like. It's ooey gooey goodness. It's nice and sticky, you see that? But oh, when you taste this, oh my God. This is one of those things that's so addicting. Don't eat too much of it, because it is nuts, guys. But it's so good. This is like good for the perfect afternoon snack. You know, after lunch, before dinner, you're just kind of like, I need something, I need something to chew. This is it right here, so good. Oh my God. All right, guys, it's dinner time, and I'm gonna show you a really quick and easy recipe. But let me mention, the easiest thing that you could put together for dinner, and the cheapest, is beans. You gotta have your, some beans on hand, whether it's black eyed peas, chickpeas, butter beans, northern beans. There's so many choices that you can make so many different dinners. Now, this recipe I'm gonna show you is curry butter beans. And when I made it on my Instagram, it went viral. It went, people went crazy for this recipe. And they should because it's absolutely delicious. And like I said, it's easy to do. I first start with one zucchini. And I just take my zucchini and I place it in a food processor hand. If you're gonna live this plant-based life, you need a food processor or a blender. So I'm placing my zucchinis in the food processor. I'm also using one or half of a yellow onion and I'm just kind of rough chopping it. Throw it inside of the food processor and a couple of cloves, cloves of garlic. Now it depends on you. If you just don't like that gar garlicky taste, use less. I love garlic and most people that are plant-based we love garlic, so I'm gonna use five. All right, we're gonna put the top on. All right, so once it's blended down, this is the texture that we're looking to have. So come on in so they could see. It's just like, almost like we used a grater to grater it down. I'm gonna place all of my mixture inside of my pan. Once we get it in the pan, come on so they could see, really easy. So we get it in the pan, just kind of spread it out so that we know that the, um, Grapeseed oil is all coated, and then we're just gonna cover it. And we're gonna allow that to cook down for a couple of minutes. Right, guys, so I gave, come on in so you can see, I gave the zucchini a good seven minutes, maybe about eight minutes to cook down. So that's what it usually looks like once we cook it down. This, we're gonna add some curry powder. And I'm just gonna put that right in there. Probably about a tablespoon of curry powder. Now guys, we are using My Vegan Kitchen Life curry powder. I make my own curry powder. You can get this on the website. You know curry, if you are Caribbean, Indian, with your, your curry powder gotta be right. So you know I did a good job blending this and together. We're gonna allow the curry powder to kind of melt together with the onions, the zucchini, and the garlic. Kind of bring your flame back to a medium and get that really going. And we're just gonna give that maybe about a minute to two minutes to kind of really melt together. So once we give that um, curry and everything to melt together, I'm making some broth. Basically, I'm using better than bouillon, no chicken broth. So this is the vegan kind. I just mixed it with some water, some warm water just to dissolve it. And I'm gonna pour that 
right in. I'm also gonna add some coconut milk. And guys, when I say coconut milk, I mean the full fat coconut milk, the one in the can. This is the brand that I use. You could choose what you want, but this I live by. It's thick, it's creamy. Once I open my can, I usually save it in a refrigerator in just a glass container. So this is what I have left over, and I'm gonna just pour that right in. And come on in so they can see. And this is what we're making, guys. We're making up the nice curry gravy. So we're gonna give that an opportunity to cook for maybe another two to three minutes, bring it to a boil before we add the other ingredients. The pot is now to a boil. This is what we're gonna do. I usually add a scotch bonnet pepper, and scotch bonnet pepper is usually really, really hot. This one I found at the farmer's market, and it really doesn't have as much heat as a scotch bonnet does, but I love to add it to the gravy because it gives it that really rich, good Caribbean flavor. I'm also adding thyme, and what I did, I just kind of wrapped it in some twine so they're not rolling around loose in the gravy, and that's all I did. Thyme looks like that. I just wrapped a small bunch. I'm also gonna add two sprays of, or two stalks of uh, green onion or scallion. I just rough chop it and I'm gonna throw it right in. And I'm gonna give that a couple of minutes to kind of melt with the uh, gravy and make the flavor, kind of bring up the flavor a little bit. So now that my pot is bubbling up for about a minute, I tasted it just to make sure the flavors are right. I feel like I need to add some black pepper. Add a little bit of cumin. Just a little bit, just to kind of warm it up a little bit. Now that I gave my gravy about a minute to kind of meld the flavors together, this is what I'm gonna add, half of a russet potato. So come on in, let me show you. I cut it down or diced it really small. So this is gonna cook really quick. This will probably cook in probably about, you know, a couple of minutes, maybe three minutes or so. I'm gonna put that in now. Also, it's gonna add great texture to the gravy and just another dimension of, like I said, texture with your beans. All right guys, so now that we gave the potatoes a couple of minutes to cook, let's take a look, come on in. Let's look at the gravy, the texture. I think it's time for the butter beans. Nice, thick, juicy beans. These are like meat texture. So we're gonna just strain them, strain off the water, and then place them right in the pot. We're gonna allow the pot to come back to a boil and get the lima beans cooked through just a little bit. So we're gonna give it like maybe two to three minutes, maybe three to four minutes the most. All right guys, cooking time is done. That was it, we gave it a couple of minutes, three to five minutes, got the butter beans nice and creamy in the sauce. Come on in so you can take a look and see what's going on in this pot. Now at this time, I'll usually remove like this thyme and the pepper, you know, anything that's too large like that and remove it. But that's it, we're gonna plate this up and taste it guys, come on, let's go. Let's get some rice on the plate. So obviously you know you should always have rice. If you don't eat rice, try to have like sweet potato, um, quinoa, look at that, look how creamy it is. I just want you to see, look at that. Oh my gosh, that's just deliciousness in the pot. Let's just scoop it right over the rice and that is Fill in, so you don't have to worry that you're not getting enough nutrition. Plenty, plenty, plenty of nutrition in that. And that is hot. Get that steam off. Okay, here we go. Mm, 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 mm. That is some good stuff. Guys. If this is your plant-based journey, this day is all the good stuff. Everything that I made, remember, from the top to the bottom, you had your water, you had your smoothie, you had your pizza, I gave you a snack, and now look at this dinner. You're gonna love it here. Stick with me, stick with my channel. I have tons and tons of recipe. Go through, look at all the videos. I will leave links for different recipes right in the description box. So there is a chickpea curry recipe. I'll leave that there and I'll leave different links for you guys. But welcome to the plant-based life. If you've been living it, enjoy these recipes. Thank you guys for spending your time in my vegan kitchen. Please subscribe. Click on that subscribe button so you get all the recipes whenever I drop new recipes. Click on the bell so you don't miss a thing. Thank you guys for spending the time with me. Enjoy. Bye, guys. What are these?